Oh, oh, oh. Mm. you look good today. It's been a while since we looked at some art tips on Instagram, huh? <laughs> no one is safe. Here's how I paint magical glowing creatures. I start by filling in their silhouettes with a light gold color, which oh. I set to the hard light blending mode, and then I turn down the opacity. Next, I select the areas I want to be the most opaque, like the body. I use a soft airbrush to brush around the outside like this. Then I soften any weird hard edges and I add soft gradients of glow to the fins and the tails. Ooh. I paint in some finer details using the lighter gold color. Next up is adding stars. I make a spaced out dot brush for this and I try to use the stars to create more form and volume. I paint in the trailing magic paths behind them, fill them in with more stars, and then I use the Photoshop path blur tool to create a tapered trail Whoa. behind the stars. If you use a different program, you can paint these little trails in yourself, stars. Ooh. And here's the result. Wow. Very impressive, Devin. Well done. And if you guys don't know Devin L. Kurtz, please go check out Devin's profile. She deserves all the support that she gets. Look, look at this. Look at this. Devin, this is a 10 out of 10. Today, I'm going to show you how to do digital art. First, use Discuss Brush and Clean. How do you show me how to do something that you don't know how to do yourself? The math is not mathing. Okay, let's give her a chance. All right, once you're done with that, grab the render brush and start rendering your sketch. Now this special tool in Procreate automatically renders your sketch for you, so you don't have to worry. Okay, so this last step is optional, but if you want to add a background, just use the background brush and brush it all over your canvas. Finally, let's add details. Daddy? <sighs> Yeah, we're just gonna move on. One out of 10, and I'm rounding up. Four basic face tips for beginners. Eyes are halfway down the face. Bottom of the nose yes. is halfway between eyes and chin. Yes. Bottom of the lips is halfway between the nose and the chin. Yes. The distance between eyes is roughly one eye. Yes. Like the part two. Good. Very simple, very concise, actually helpful. 10 out of 10. Sharpening your pencil the wrong way is ruining your art. With such a pencil, you have no control and you shade inconsistently. All you need is a blade and sandpaper. Start by placing the blade far back, almost horizontally to the pencil. Then with your thumb, start gently pushing the blade and removing very thin pieces. This takes me back. I used to do this so much as a young child. Also, keep rotating the pencil so you remove the wood evenly until yes. you expose about a centimeter of the graphite. Ooh. Then get the sandpaper and That's place it on the edge of a surface so you can lay the Ooh. pencil almost horizontally. Keep rotating and rubbing it against the surface until it looks like this. Ooh. Lastly, sand the tip of the pencil so it's not sharp and it looks like a bullet. Ooh. With such a pencil, you can shade faster with a consistent value and also achieve a variety of line thicknesses. The size matter. Back in the good old days when I did traditional art, this is exactly how we would sharpen our pencils. The sandpaper part seems a bit tedious, but I guess it does make the shape of your lead a little bit more precise. But I used to just kind of shave the whole thing away with a knife. That's cool though. 10 out of 10. Good job for spreading this information so that people can understand how to sharpen their pencils. Okay, guys. This is a nice way to shape. What okay. you want to do is uh, your base color, Ooh. pick your darker color, move in the hue. You sound like you're about to cry. Are you okay? Take your tool, your lasso tool, draw out your shape. Yeah, draw a bunch of shapes. Okay. That's going to be your shadow. Okay. Then pick your, uh, oh. your airbrush. Oh. And then just start brushing it in, just brushing it in, just brushing it in. Oh. And once you have a, you know, more shapes, draw more shapes, uh -oh. and more shapes. Ooh. And then you should have something like this. That's nice. Thank you. This is great. You guys know why the lasso tool combined with the airbrush is so good? It's because it forces you to have both a hard and a soft edge. And when you have a good combination of the two types of edges, it makes your rendering look so much more dynamic. 10 out of 10. Good job. Don't be nervous, bro. You're doing a great job. Ways to grow as an artist on Instagram. I need help with this. Pass. 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 Smash. Sure. All right. So it's coming from someone who has a hundred thousand followers. So they probably know what they're doing, but I have to add one thing. If you're somebody who's trying to post work online and grow your audience online, just try to improve, try to be good, try to make the best art you can. Let your work and your passion speak for itself and people will notice. Don't do too much. It's just like working out. You put the hard work in at the gym, you eat good, you sleep good. Next thing you know, you're going to grow muscles. That's it's just one and two. That's an eight out of 10. You got the right idea. This is how I make my composition. Okay. Ooh. 
What? Where are these lines even, dude? No way. Call me a conspiracy theorist, but doesn't it feel like some of these are just made up by people who are trying to confuse the younger artists? Like, bro, what am I looking at? What am I looking at? I'd prefer to use simpler methods, but hey, whatever floats your boat. If this works for you, it works for you. Here are some quick tips for how I like to pick my color palettes. Ooh, okay. The first and most foundational tip is to limit your color palette to just cool or warm hues. Oh. Just by limiting yourself to one side of the color spectrum, you can get some really awesome results. If I want some more interesting contrast, I'll take a color and replace it from the opposing end of my palette. Okay. And that can add a really nice pop. So when picking palettes, play it safe with sticking with one end of the color spectrum or add visual interest with the contrasting color. Hope this okay. helps you get started with your color palettes. Ooh, that's a nice skull. I like that. Okay, so I think she's coming from a position of doing more illustrative drawings. So things that are a little bit more graphic. So I definitely see why she said to stick to warm or cool to play it safe because there is probably a lot less color variation in this style. But if you're painting in like a semi-realistic style, just keep in mind that warms and cools are going to be present in almost every single scenario keyword almost but for what you're talking about here this is great eight out of ten if why not to draw perspective start with a circle duplicate it and make it smaller keep Ooh. repeating rotate Ooh. 45 degrees duplicate and flip so you get this Ooh. one two three four connect these points with a cross duplicate and rotate these crosses follow these lines oh. and draw all the buildings and add details. I mean, that's cool. That's a great tutorial on how to draw a perspective grid for a fisheye kind of lens. So good job, 10 out of 10. A hand tutorial that's actually easy. Oh my God, no. Oh no. Oh no. I mean, you did make the line art part a lot easier, but was that actually easy though? You would still need to know the anatomy of the hand in order to draw a hand that good. Five out of 10. Let's make this really fun foliage brush. Ooh. Draw your leaf shape Ooh, and like then that. export it to image gallery. Then crop it. On your right, click the plus icon. Now in the shape menu, go to shape source and import leaf shape you made. In rendering menu, choose intense blending. Then in Apple Pencil, slide the opacity to zero and increase spacing and jitter to get that feeling of separation uh. and randomness between stems. Toggle all these options to make leaf brush strokes feel organic. And finally, in the color dynamics menu, play with the settings to make your individual leaf stamps different colors. That's cool. I work in Photoshop, so Procreate's brush creation stuff has always confused me, but I'm going to try that out. That's cool. That is cute, but not super expressive. So what can we do? We can add the upper eyelids to show direction. Bottom eyelids, if you squish, will give an extra cute smile. Wow. You can erase from the inside of the eyes to make it look like glittery and happy. Wow. You can play again with the upper and the bottom eyelids together to make it squish together or squish in the center to make them look frustrated. If you make the pupils even smaller, they'll look kind of scared and you can use the outside of the eyes to accentuate that or remove the pupil altogether and then it looks really mad. Lots more examples in my book. Oh, you have a book. This is a great lesson on the power of simplicity. You see a dot and a few lines and you have a whole different expression for your character. 10 out of 10. This is amazing. How I make my art look more finished. Just finish it. Add multiply layer above your drawing. Fill it with a matching color. I'm using pink here. Erase the spots you want to highlight. Lower the opacity to your liking. Create another layer above and set it to add mode. Use light colors on the spots you've erased earlier. Add textures. There's plenty of textured brushes that can make your drawing look Ooh. more appealing. Noise. Fill in the layer above your drawing with gray. Apply noise effect and adjust. Set the layer mode to overlay. Adjust the opacity before, after. Ooh. I really like the textures you've added. That's great. 10 out of 10. It's an art hack video that's actually nice. What is, are those boobas? Have you ever accidentally drew lining in your art and can't find which layer of ink is in? No. Oh, how to draw feet. Wait a minute. This an what? This animation? Oh, whoa, dude! That the, the animation in this piece, my God, ten out of ten. What's this? Oh, more feet. Okay. 
I really don't know why Instagram's recommending so many feet drawings to me now, but the foreshortening on that, wow. Wow. Great job, 10 out of 10, that's great. I've spoken to so many self-taught artists in my live stream, like thousands of them, that is one thing I keep seeing. You guys know nothing about negative space. When you learn about negative space, there's kind of true thing that you can't simply draw just by cutting out those negative pieces. Kind of true. Hand, for example, if we can look and identify the negative spaces, you can build a lot of your fingers inside with just a negative space. So I'm gonna draw the outside of the finger so I can get to that negative space spot. So here's when I'm gonna try to define these fingers, these three fingers connected together with yeah. just a negative space shape there, other negative space there. So sometimes literally it's easier just to draw those negative space in between and I've been already made the thumb. Let's make this little triangle negative space and these fingers are put together so not a lot of negative space there and we'll draw these wrinkles to make the outside. Why are we looking for the negative space? Because sometimes the negative space is easier to draw than the actual fingers or all the stuff around it and, and sometimes like we did here the negative space can build your fingers for you without you having to think about every knuckle and nail and curve. Negative space is so underrated. If you're trying to draw something accurately you have to take into account both the positive and negative space and you did a really great job explaining it. 10 out of 10 that's fantastic. I've been getting a few comments on this video asking about my style so here is a timeline of my journey for reference this is what my style used to look like and this is what it looks like now so one i'd say think of your style finding as progressive rather than immediate my style began with line art and colors and now you can see i'm exploring backgrounds and composition I did sketch requests, which I really recommend. If you take a look at my old sketch requests and then compare them to my more recent one, you can actually see development of my technical skill and also some style progression. So first, identify what do you consider a style. For me, I see it as both my line weight and what brushes I'm using for the drawing. After you figure out what you want to define your style, you should identify what you actually like. So for example, while I was figuring out my style a lot more, I was thinking, mm, I like the way the solid colors look here. I like how thick the line art is here. I don't like the glowy effect I added here. And finally, you can summarize my tips into two categories, which is practicing and then identifying. But there's not really an order of how to do it. It's more like a cycle. If you're stuck identifying, then practice. And if you're struggling with motivation to practice, then identify what you would like about your art. That's a lot of information there, but that's really good information. I'm give that a 10 out of 10 really good job i feel like almost every video we watched was a 10 out of 10 instagram <laughs> good job maybe we can survive after they ban tiktok just as a piece of advice to anybody looking for their style no rush please don't rush like she said in this video it's a progression it's not immediate you can't just say i want this style so i'm gonna get this style it doesn't happen like that it happens over many pieces probably hundreds of pieces and then you start to slowly develop this language this visual language that you like to communicate with anyways guys so those are some art tips from instagram like really good ones too i feel like i actually learned something today hopefully you guys feel the same go give some love and support to the artists in this video they're doing a great job on instagram and like this video subscribe share it with a friend who needs psychiatric assistance and i'll see you guys on the next video <laughs> Okay, now that most people have left, we're gonna do some uh, some poses for the thumbnail. <laughs> we're gonna do, uh, what should we do? All right, we're gonna be like, oh, Okay, all right. Imagine somebody who just skips all the way to the end of this video and just sees that. Just, I'd be horrified. <laughs>